127 of Magic the Amateuring. That's right. If you're listening to this, congratulations. You've found it. And if you're videoing this with your eye sockets, then congratulations. You've located with your vision seers. That's right. These are two things that people do. We know because we are people. We are definitely not aliens wearing human skins. We're definitely not a pile of otters. We're definitely not a pile of baby snakes wearing a dress. Who? <laughs> but baby snakes. Yeah. Not, not, you know, full-grown scary snakes. Yeah, but, like, aren't all snakes just still snakes? Well, yeah, that that is accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, tiny little baby snakes. Yeah. Can I tell you a story? Yes. I accidentally killed a spider yesterday, and I still feel bad about it. Aww. I, it was, like, in my room. Yeah. And it had these really long front legs, and I, it was climbing on the side of my bed, and I scared it down to the floor. Yeah. Um, and then I went to go get a cup to put over it so yeah. I could like, you know, mm -hmm. take it outside. Scoot it outside. And as I put the cup over it, it like jumped forward and I squished it with the cup. Well, it's not your fault, you know. He was, he made a break for it and I still just feel bad. Probably left a nest behind of two No! <laughs> I hate you. Like, don't. Not in your even. house. Outside your house. Okay, good. Like, that's where it needs to be. <laughs> Look, I just feel bad. Like, I've been trying to... Look, I'm not a... I, I'm afraid of spiders. I have yeah, a big fear. I mean, me I too. shrieked a lot while this was happening, and I didn't <laughs> sweep it up until today. I just put the cup over the dead spider and left it. Did you say a few words? <laughs> <laughs> like, eek? I said eek a lot. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but anyway, like, I've been trying to adopt this, like, live and let live policy with them, because it's like, you know, they're just doing they're just their thing. They're doing their spider thing. So I feel bad. Well, Anyways. think of it this way. Tomorrow you're going to wake up and there's going to be a web knitted in the corner of your room that says, some Megan. <laughs> I don't know why I said Why, Charlotte? Knitted. <laughs> why? Yeah. But... <laughs> the spider will not have like spun it. Little the spider will have sat knitting. there with four sets of knitting needles, one pair, like one for each of its <laughs> pair of legs. That is a, that is an interesting image, isn't it? Can you imagine a spider just like sitting back, with, sitting back with those little with knitting like needles? Four four knitting needles. That is so. some magic card art if I've ever yeah. heard it before. Oh man. Anyways, <laughs> this is a podcast about Magic: The Gathering, the card game. Hello, it's I'm not Maria. About spiders. <laughs> I'm Megan. And we're definitely not a pile of spiders. Oh, God. Inside a human skin hosting a oh. podcast. <laughs> Did I just make the grossest thing that's ever been said on the yep. show? Yep. Unknown. Maybe. Probably top 10. But on today's episode, guess what we're going to talk about? Not spiders. We no. have a celebration. <gasps> we do because Megan here, this very Megan that you see before you this or hear in your ears, has won a PPTQ. Yay! That's right. <laughs> Anyways, this is super exciting. Yeah, she won a PPTQ, so we're going to talk all about yes. that. She played in two this past weekend, yes. so we're going to find out, you know, what was her secret strat to take down that PPTQ. She played yeah. in Standard and Limited, yeah. so we're going to hear about both of those. And this past weekend, we also had some modern tournaments. We had tournaments at Copenhagen and Kobe, so we're going to hear what decks are making a go for it in modern, which is important because uh, we got Vegas coming up. That's right. And Modern is one of the tournaments at Vegas that I will be playing in. And I really have to make a decision because yeah, I don't know. think Boggles is going to be good right now. In fact, I think it's going to be actively even worse than it was in San Antonio. So I, I got to figure man. something out. But you've got it. I, I do have it. Sometimes this is a Modern. <laughs> yes. <'Cause> you know what? <laughs> Sometimes the way you call. De decide what you're going to play in Modern is you're like, like what do, do I, I have physically it? have? I do have it. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about that. We also have a Flavor Text Theater coming your way and a drawing because we've reached the end of the month. So some lucky patron is going to win some sweet stuff because oh, yeah. Yeah. we've got some more Card Kingdom um, battle decks to give away. Ooh, Speaking of Card Kingdom, you right. guys, they're yeah. our sponsor. Hold and they're on. awesome. Megan's going to pull out one of, some of these battle decks over uh, here. We have Black Metal and Flight Cup Club. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. These are pretty pretty sweet. Thank you, Card Kingdom. Head to cardkingdom.com slash mtacast to buy your singles, your boosters. If you want to check out these battle decks or anything else that Card Kingdom has to offer, go through our affiliate link and they will know that you support us, supporting them, and it's just a cycle of support. Supporting you. Yeah. Wait, what? It's a cycle. It's yeah. a support it's cycle. It's a support cycle. Which is one of which the cycles. Which is <laughs> your dryer? Yes. Yep. Yeah, up top. Same joke. <laughs> 
the support cycle is where you put yourself if you want to go in your dryer if you're having a down day. Uh, yeah. Put me on support cycle. You know, when I was Please. little, what I thought that if you went in the dryer, you would shrink because my mom always was like, don't put them in the dryer. The, you know, those clothes will shrink. And so yeah. I thought that if I went in the dryer, I would become tiny size. And so it's kind of amazing. I was really into getting in that dryer, but it oh, never, yeah. never worked Thank out. Thank goodness you didn't because you don't shrink. You just die. <laughs> Honey, I killed the kids. You ever see that movie? No, because <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> Do you know what? I forgot about how the plot of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids is where uh, he puts his kids in the dryer and shrinks them down. Yeah, that was That's the first how it happens, cut right? before yeah. the like FCC was and like, whoa, like whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait a second. People we cannot gonna encourage people to do this <laughs> at all. Yeah, 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 absolutely. That was a that was a fun child thing that I thought was true. <laughs> For many years, actually. <laughs> anyway, support cycle, carkeenum.com slash MTAcast. And of course, you all are in the support cycle, too. If you're a patron of ours, patreon.com slash MTAcast is where to go to join the less than 1% club, which, you know, if you don't know why we call it that, we call it that because literally less than 1% of people who listen or watch this show support us. So it is super important uh, if you're able to and if you think the show is something worth supporting that you head over and donate as little as a dollar an episode and it makes an enormous difference in our lives and the content we create because you know what we've been doing, Megan? What? We've been making more content. Yeah, we have. Yeah. There is a video out today it is. on YouTube. You can go watch it. It stars none other than the professor himself and a friend of ours who looks <laughs> alarmingly exactly like the professor's son. They are not related as far as we no. know. As far as we but know. Like, but you never know. In retrospect, looking at that video, it's like, wow, we could not have. If we I know. Had, if we had put out a casting call, we could not have done better. No. <laughs> so head over to YouTube.com slash MTAcast. Hit that sub button and check out our latest PSA. Uh, it's based on the famous I learned it by watching you PSA from the 80s. So I hope you enjoy it. check it out. Every Tuesday, we're going to put up a new video there. As well as every Thursday, where you see the video version of this podcast. But this is new. This is new content we're giving to you on Tuesdays. That's right. You could call it YouTube Tuesdays or Tubes Days. <laughs> YouTube's day. YouTube's days. Yes, I love it. So next week we'll have another different video up there. If you want to catch it, uh, go over and hit subscribe. I'm super excited about this. Megan, you also recently did a video which we tweeted out, which I yes. just love and is perfect for Magic the Amateuring. Yes, it is about players who went to their first Pro Tour. Uh, it is over on Daily MTG, or you can find it. We tweeted out a yeah. link to it. It's delightful. Everyone is charming. Maria edited it. It looks amazing. Megan shot it. Looks great. Her first time shooting anything. Check it out. Yo. <laughs> For the noobs, dying with cards in your hand. Hey, everybody. As we mentioned, I went to two PPTQs this weekend, one of them more successful than the other. First for this, for the noobs, we're going to talk about the limited one because I had a moment where I was just like, oh, that was a big mistake. You had a moment. I did have a moment. Okay. I had a big mistake moment um, where so it was in uh, the first round and uh, I think I was like I was pretty narrow to win this match anyways. My yeah. opponent had some really powerful cards in their deck um, that were super sweet. They had like, you know, like a glyph keeper, which is just <laughs> yeah, that card is just card. nuts. That card is just nuts. And like an honored Hydra and like just overall like a very nice like flyers uh, like a flyers and um, creatures Beef. with a lot of protection. Yeah, uh, strategy. So it was very good. But um, in my, I think we were in the second game. Yeah. And I had seen Glyphkeeper and Honored Hydra. And then this round, I had already seen the Honored Hydra. It was done for. We, had, I, you know, I had managed to get rid of it. It was gone. Oh, but there was wow. still Glyphkeeper, um, you know, that I hadn't seen yet, but that I was very worried about. And I, already, I had already cast, I had Dusk to Dawn in my deck, so I had already cast this Wrath, right? So I knew, like, I wasn't going to be able to just Wrath away the Glyph Keeper. Um, and so I had a copy of the five mana black instant that exiles a creature. And I, I was like, I, and I had a Decimator Beetle. Um, which is the one that puts minus one, minus one counters on things. Yeah. Um, but the Decimator Beetle had been a looser, illusory wrappings, so it was an O2. Uh, and so I had this final reward in my hand, and I had this Decimator Beetle on the battlefield. Decimator Beetle on the battlefield. Beetle battlefield. Decimator Beetle on the battlefield. Anyways, and it was... Uh, 
and my opponent was like kind of beating me down with the top crop elite and some other flyers still. Um, but they had tapped out and I was just like, do you know what? I'm going to attack with this O2 beetle because you still get the trigger to put minus yes. one, minus one counters on things. Um, and I was like, that's just sick value. So I... So I attack with this beetle, put a counter on the top crop elite, and my opponent has the one in a white uh, instant. It's a, uh, it's an aftermath card that has like a green fight side, but it gives plus two plus two and lifelink and untaps it. Yes. So they do that to their top crop elite, which they had exerted, um, and they go to block. And in my mind, I'm like, do you know what? They're just blocking this decimator beetle that already has this illusory wrappings on it anyways. I'm just going to let it die. And I ended up losing a couple turns later to an exerted Tacrop elite like, that just keeps, you know, attacking sure. in and buffing all these creatures. And um, a guy who had been sitting nearby watching the game was like, hey, did you ever think about casting that final reward on that Tacrop elite? And in my mind, I was like, no, if I was ever going to win the game, I was going to need to somehow ping the Glyph Keeper to like you know get through its barrier and then exile it sure you were really worried about is, that exactly here. but the point is that i was already losing the game to what was on the board and i ended up dying with that final reward still in my hand because i didn't have enough black mana to cast two spells in my hand later on in the game sure and so it was just one of those moments where it's just like yeah do you know what like if my opponent had at some point drawn the glyph keeper i was probably dead to it yeah. um although i had some Avon initiates and stuff in my deck so maybe not um but I was holding on to this final reward so hard. Yeah. And I just died without casting it. And, like, if I had cast it, there's a chance that I would have gone on to win that game. Yeah. Um, so it just made me think about, you know, I feel like that's probably something that happens to me a little bit more often than it ought to. Where I, I hold on to cards for better scenarios. Yeah. And I just die with those cards in my hand because I should have just freaking cast them. <laughs> this is like a tricky rope to walk because we don't want to be firing off our cards like Final Reward, which is premium yeah, it's removal really good. Yeah. on just anything, which is a problem that I have, which is I play too aggressively and I want to kill something, even if um, that is not going to be the thing that ends up either killing me or yeah. losing me the game. I'm just like, oh, I'm playing such a tempo game, but in reality, it's not a tempo game so the, the reverse can also be true where you hang on to something like you did and you're mm -hmm. like oh i cannot beat that glyph keeper mm -hmm. which is like a perfectly fine card to be scared of but yeah. then you're like oh wait a second but you know what <laughs> if it's not on the battlefield and you're dying to something that is on the battlefield like maybe you just need to freaking <laughs> cast that spell just like take your medicine exactly Here and then go. like i would have been able to keep this beetle around and like yeah. i would have kept kept getting incremental value off of it so like who knows what would have happened um so that was definitely a moment for me I felt like my deck was, like, very medium. I yeah. was playing four colors and a lot of my rares. Wow. Um, which is, I didn't feel bad about that part. Did you have I had, fixie? I had two gifts of paradise, a spring to mind, a fetid pools, and a painted bluff. Oh, sweet. So it was, like, totally cool. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah. You know, my deck was kind of clunky. It was all right. You know, the Decimeter Beetle, by the way, PSA. Yeah. Um, you obviously know this, but I did not... <laughs> just yesterday <laughs> yeah which is probably bad that uh the best the decimator beetles abilities are not connected no you don't <laughs> have to remove a counter for something to put a counter on something else i was playing this and i was like well i don't have any counters to remove and then i was like wait a second i don't have to have I any counters to, to remove one on there yeah no, it's pretty great. Yeah. It's like that card I counted that card <laughs> as when i was like sorting my cards and what i wanted to play yeah I counted that card as a rare. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. It's just insane. It's pretty rare worthy. It is. It is. It's just very good. I was so. playing in a... Speaking of sealed PT, PTQs, I was playing yeah. in an online sealed PPTQ yeah, just right. yesterday. And I started out 3-0, so I was super excited. And my first three games were not that difficult yeah. to win. So I was like, oh, What were you playing? Great. What colors? I was playing green and black, splashing red for okay. a Merciless Javelinier, which is a worthwhile yeah. card to splash for, as well as in, you know, four mana Chandra's four damage. <laughs> Chandra's four damage and electrify. <laughs> electrify, and uh, which was which was fine too. I had uh, a couple of ways to fix that with yeah. two decimator beetles in it. Gee, so that was very good. I mean, it was it was pretty solid because the two decimator beetles and it just had you know a yeah. solid middle game. The problem was it didn't have very many early drops, and that's kind of how it failed in the final two rounds. But um, yeah, that was a that was, we both had a decimator beetle lesson. Yeah, <laughs> this, we sure did. These past we days, sure did. 
a decimator beetle lesson. Oh, I had a decimator beetle battle at some point. <laughs> this is where you each have a decimator beetle. Decimator beetle battle. <laughs> yeah, decimator beetle battle. It's decimator beetles battling on the battlefield. The decimator beetle battle battlefield. was a battlefield that was battered. Did you have a battered decimator beetle on the bitter battlefield? <laughs> It was a fairly embattled decimator beetle battle. On the bitter battlefield. <laughs> yes, on the bitter battlefield. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever considered cooking your decimator beetle in some butter on the bitter battlefield? I would never cook a decimator beetle in butter on a battlefield, whether it was bitter or not. Have you ever eaten an insect? <laughs> no. Side follow-up question? No. Hmm, I'm trying to think if I have, only by mistake when one flew into my mouth. <laughs> PPTQ victory. That's right. I also played a second PPTQ. It went a lot better than the first one. Yeah. Even though I literally went into it. So this is really funny. And a couple of people pointed this out on Twitter. Yeah. And they're like, congrats. And they're like, you. so you definitely hit that planeswalker point threshold you were going for, right? Yeah. I was like, yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, you did. You sure did. <laughs> because I literally went into Sunday like... 20 points short oh. and I was like do you know what all I need is these 20 points like awesome it'll be super easy because right. you know you get the bonus for just showing like playing yeah. in this and then a round bonus for victories I'm like literally I need to win like a round today yeah. to hit that cool um and then you know like you get your buy you know then like six tense hours later you know <laughs> so I would just want to read I, was. <laughs> I want to read a string of text messages that I received <laughs> <laughs> from Megan uh, during this. Yeah. I was not in town, so I was I had to live this like vicariously, vicariously through Megan's text messages. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> Let's find it. Let's find it. Um, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> sorry, this is so good. <laughs> okay. The first one was when you told me you were dead in, in, um, in the limited. Oh, yeah. And then you said, I'm playing Blue Red Control tomorrow. Yeah. All right, and I didn't get an update until I received, I'm in the top eight, <laughs> but I'm playing Matt, and he's going to beat me, <laughs> which yeah. is one of the people profiled in your players. Yeah, in, who, the, in the video. In the top uh, first PT, or first, uh, yeah, first Pro Tour video. Yeah, he went 10-5 at the last Pro Tour. I was like, yeah, I'm losing to this This guy. guy's the real deal, <laughs> and he's really nice, so I texted back, take that nice guy to losing town. <laughs> Then I heard, I won on to the semis. And I was like, ah, reply, on to the finals, barf, 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 barf. <laughs> yep. And I said, oh my God, you can do it. All caps, obviously, until I effing won or some S. <laughs> and I've, I've censored that for the, the children who listen to this show. But... Yeah, yeah, that was the yeah. emotional journey I was yeah. on. As and I was like sitting there because the last message didn't come in until later, and I was like, "Is it going to game three? I, yeah, it's been it a long did. time. It did go to game three. So I was on the edge of my yeah. seat. So Megan, yeah. please walk us through your your amazing victory at this PPTQ. So I'll have to tell you. First of all, my day started out horribly, <laughs> like really bad. I killed a spider. Uh, <laughs> um, so like I. In the first round, um, I mulligan to five in my first game, Ugh. and my opponent is on Team or Marvel, and just goes like turn six Chandra, and I have seen none of the twelve counter spells in my deck, and I'm just like, yep, Whoa. fine, like it resolves. Twelve counter spells. All right. um, that could have countered this because he didn't he, like censor is live because he just like taps six mana and yeah. sh jams it. I'm like, yep, okay, and then he casts Marvel next turn and hits a new Ulamog, and I'm like, I'm dead. Okay, dead. And then the next game. Um, Again, I, like, keep a hand that has, like, some anticipates and some glimmers, but no counters. And again, he just, like, goes up to six. I see no counter spells. He jams Chandra on six. Ugh. And I die to it eventually. Question. Yes. So you played this deck not only because you love this deck, but because yes. it's pretty good against Marvel, right? Um, I would say that it is close. Close? Yes. Um, I don't know that I would, like, especially earlier in the day, I don't know that I would have called it good. Okay. Um, but by the time I got through the top eight... I was feeling, like, pretty confident in it, actually. Okay. I do feel like it is very tight, um, but with, like, a little bit of, like, with a little bit of luck, you're going to get there. Okay. Is how I would feel about it. Um, and so I started out the day, like, real, like, I was just in such a down mood because yeah. I was like, this is terrible. Like, that game was terrible. I didn't even really get to play. And then I got to buy the next round. So I just, like, got to mope for an hour. Well, you got your 20 points. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I got, I did have, like, the upside of, like, I got 20 points and I went and bought a cookie and it was, like, great. <laughs> 
Sounds like a great day to me. Yeah. So, um, but then I went on to like, I like won the next one. No, I, I drew the next one against the other blue red control deck. Oh. And I completely effed up and I missed a Dragon Master Outcast trigger, which is like just the newbiest of noob things to do. <laughs> I felt so bad about it because I had specifically, I needed to not miss it, to not die to the Sphinx of the final word. And I just like, yep, I just like went and drew my card. And at that point, it's too late. It's too late. It's too freaking late. Okay. So I had one game one and then I barely lost game two after Mole getting to five because I missed this trigger. And then we drew round three. I got him to one on turn five. Oh. I got him to one and it was terrible. Um, but you know, yeah. whatever it That's happened. It's a brutal start. Um, and then I won the next one and then I got, so I was at like two, one and one. Yeah. Out of five rounds. Um, and then I got paired up against uh, someone that I knew who was already dead. They were at X and two, so they were not going to make top eight. Um, so they very kindly just conceded, conceded to me. Oh, that's so nice. Um, and so I snuck in to the top eight at the eighth seed, <laughs> which was great because then it turned into revenge of the eighth seed. Yeah, and then um, and then my my opponents in the finals or in the top eight went Marvel, Marvel, Teamer Energy. Wow, which was super interesting. Yeah, um, and was and was like a very aggressive deck. Um, but how did it you was feel? Like, like your your deck matched up against the field. Um, you know, I like at the end of the day, I really liked it. Yeah. I didn't start out feeling that way. Um, and I was like, I've made a horrible mistake. But there's like so I'm playing a version of the deck that has some anticipates and some extra counter spells in it. Yeah. Instead of um for hieroglyphic illumination. And I think that that is correct. Okay. Because you just need a little bit one, like you just need counter spells um team like you can win against ether works as long as you have the right counters for the right things at right. the right times um and anticipate and having more counter spells just make that more likely man um and so okay i wanted there's like a different part of this that i decided that i wanted to talk about oh though, all right which i think is super interesting um and i've talked about this before but like sitting down to the top eight mm -hmm. i the only feeling that I can really identify is this, like, certainty that there was no way I could win. Yeah. Like, there was no way I could win a PTQ. Yeah. P PTQ. Like, I just didn't believe in my ability to do it. Yeah. Fundamentally. Yeah. Um, and that's, like, I feel like I've talked about that before. And it's something that I would, like, if, if I had to pick a thing that I changed about myself, it would be that mentality. It really sucks. Even going into the finals, I was just like, I can't imagine a world in which I win this. I right. don't think that I can. Um, not because I know anything about my opponent or what they're playing. I just like didn't have that confidence mm -hmm. and that really sucks. And I also thought about it in the context of, so this version of the deck that I was playing with these anticipates, um, I realized that when people, so I had been talking with some other people about it and they're like, I don't know. It just seems more correct to play the illuminations. Like they cycle. And I you know, I'm the person who's been playing this deck. Right. Who's actually been practicing with it online. And I was like, oh, you know, I guess you're right. And I didn't even ever, con like, I realized that when I talk with other Magic players um, about what I'm playing. You don't value your opinion over theirs. At all. I And it's to the point where I view what they say as an opinion that must be correct if it is contradictory to mine. Right. And that I must be the person who is wrong. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I know exactly what you're talking about. And it's so terrible because do you know what? At the end of it, I think like I'm right, but it's so hard for me to say that. <laughs> it's so hard for me to have like played yeah. this deck and been like, do you know what? I did like I made the right call. Yeah. I think that that like it made a difference. Absolutely. <laughs> but for some reason, it's so hard and that really like it really sucks you know well i feel like you know just being how we are you know we've been playing for five years which by the way is not no time no, it is not no time but we still have this feeling that we're amateur players right yeah our show is called magic the amateur yeah which is like because we're not professionals no we're not <laughs> but people keep saying oh you've got to now now's the time you change the name of your yeah. show and it's like well <laughs> <sighs> you know, our, our, it's not because of who we are necessarily. Yeah. It's about uh, what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Where we're where we're aiming the show. But like, think of the video you made about the players who made their first pro tour. Yeah, this is the same thing that Matt said in that video. He said, 
you know, may, what would I change next? Oh, he didn't say this in the video, but this is an outtake. Yeah. What would I change next time? Maybe I'd be a little cockier is what he yeah. said, which was kind of a joke. But what he meant was... I should believe in myself. Yes, especially because at the beginning of the, like, like when I had interviewed him beforehand, he was like, just sort of like, I don't think I'm going to win any matches, but I like look forward to watching my friends win. Matches. Yeah, yeah, right. And so it's like, why don't you allow yourself to think that way about yourself too? Yeah. Like I. And that's the and royal or the collective yeah, you. The collective you. And it's just, it was so interesting. And I mean, like, yeah, it also, I, yeah. It so, was just something that I thought about. Everybody out there who thinks that maybe they've got to always listen to somebody else, guess what? Sometimes your opinion Sometimes is right. you're right. And you also have the right to win a PPTQ or yeah, you any, do. an FNM, whatever you're going and playing, because you put time and dedication into this game, just like Megan does here. And you know what? Gosh darn it. Gosh darn it. She, there is a world in which she won the P, that PPTQ, and, and it's this one. one. <laughs> It still is so strange to me. Yeah. It still is so strange. Did you do wake up and you're like, I want a PPT. Do you know what? Like the rest of the day, I felt like fucking great. <laughs> sorry to for, sorry for the swears, but like I felt amazing. Yeah. I yeah. was You I was should. Just like, yeah. You should. <laughs> it's like this imposter syndrome has it worked is. its way into it's all the way. Into all parts of our lives. Yeah. Out it's there. So true. I'm speaking for a lot of people for whom this might be true. But like sometimes you've got to say to you, you've got to look inside your own brain and yeah. say, you know what, brain? <laughs> like, hey jerk. Just take a nap for a second, okay? Imposter chill the up out. Just chill out. Because, chill out. Yeah. Because you deserve it just as much as everybody who showed up to that tournament, yep. even if you've only been playing a week. Yep. That's what I think. So, anyways, it's it was super interesting. And so I wanted to mention just really quickly, because yeah. I think I talked about this back when I played uh, Denver, and I had mentioned, I was like, oh, you know, um, Prothering Guest, uh, and now uh, who works at Watsi, Andrew Brown, yes. had been watching a match there and was like, uh, had told me to get more aggressive with my wandering fumaroles when I didn't have other stuff to do. And I do feel like if there's two things that were key to me winning, it's one that I feel like control decks are very natural to me. Yes. Uh, like it feels, I, I feel very good about piloting control. Um, and I think it's because I know... Like, I'm very flexible with, like, things like taking damage or, like, letting spells resolve that are fine resolving because right. I have other ways to deal with them. Like, I think I'm good at threat evaluation for control decks. But the other thing was that I got so aggressive with Wandering Fumarols. <laughs> there were times yeah. when it's just, like, if I looked at my hand and it's like, I can activate this Wandering Fumarol and attack and still have the mana to cast what's in my hand. Or, do you know what? Like, the bluff value of I have nothing in my hand. Um, and yeah. I'm going to try, like, your opponent's gonna, just going to try and cast stuff into your hand anyways. Yeah, they are. Um, and so if you don't have it, like, just activate a Wandering Fumarole and smack them for four. Yeah, why not? Because, like, you need to start killing them if you don't have counter spells. <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. Wait, sorry. And one more thing. Go for this it. This is my most proud moment. Oh, okay. Besides the Wandering Fumaroles, there was a point when I was playing Matt. And he had a Roller Virtuoso in play and had made a bunch of Thopters. He had, like, four Thopters. Um, and he had just made them. And I had exactly six mana up. And he attacked. He had just made the Thopters. And he attacked me for four with just the Thopters. Yeah. But not with the Roller Virtuoso. Oh. And then he, like, played a land and maybe did something, like, he cast, you know, something not super... Um, like not super important, like a rogue refiner or something sure. like that. And had cards in hand and had mana up. And I looked at it and I had a torrential gear hook in my hand that I needed to cast and I needed it to resolve because I needed to hit the sweltering suns sure. to kill like to wrath his board. Um and I but they're like those Etherworks decks play sensor. A lot of them do. And I so I was like, I feel like I'd like I'm not sure if he's a four sensor deck um or not. But it's really bad if this gear hook doesn't resolve. But then I looked at his board and I looked at it and like Matt, like we said, is a very good player. Yeah. He's someone who's going to look at my mana and be like, notice that I only have six lands available. And he didn't attack with the Whirler Virtuoso. And I was like, do you know what? Matt thinks that I have a gear hook in hand yeah. or is like plan playing around it. And if he had a sensor for... For my gear hulk, he would have attacked with that whirler virtuoso. Yes. And there was like, 
again, this comes back to like the self doubt thing. I had such a moment of like self doubt about it because I was like, Megan, there's no way that you can read a situation like that. <laughs> Like, what are you doing, you idiot? And, but then I was like, do you know what? That's valid. That's fucking yeah, valid. Like, cast this gear hook. And I cast it, and it resolved. So I just was like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Suck it. And then I, you know, I went on to draw Sweltering Suns and Math's board. It was wow. great. Wow. So anyways, that was another moment of, like, do you know what? One, believe in yourself. And two, you know, like, I felt very so good about the read of that situation. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, man. I think as, like... People who, are, you know, just like underrepresented communities in magic kind of have a harder time having confidence when it comes to the game. Yeah. And so this is, let this just be an example, I guess, t to you out there, if that helps you that, you know, it, it can be done and you should have confidence in yourself because a lot of players already have it. And it's just like, you know what? Yeah. Why can't I just have it, it too? You deserve it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Oh, that's so awesome. Okay, so you're moving on. The way this works, you win yeah. a PPTQ, you move on to an RPTQ, a regional yes. P Pro Tour qualifier. And it's in August and it's standard. Oh. Which I am. Do you know what? I also realized I've thought it for a while now. Yeah. Do you know what? I'm a better constructed player than I am a limited player. Yeah, I feel like, you. It's just like, it's just a confession. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's confessional. a truth in my soul. <laughs> because I realized, I was texting a friend, I was like, do you know what? I practice it less and, and you're I just better. better at yeah. it. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's it. That's fine. That's the truth that's of the situation. Fine. I like actually think I'm also better at constructed, but I very, very rarely play it. Yeah. Um, but whenever I do, I think I do a little better than I do in limited, yeah. which I don't know what that means. But yeah, that's a fine thing. That's a fine thing <sighs> to admit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so you're going to play in August and we're all going to be rooting for you. The top what is it four, four four players from an yeah. rptq go on to the pro tour so everyone so practice my little heart out get ready to send your good vibes to that rptq in august where is it at i don't know <laughs> <laughs> do you know what did you show up miss somewhere the part of the story where i didn't think like i went yeah. in trying to get 20 planeswalker <laughs> points and i came out and people are like when's the rptq and i was like i literally have no idea <laughs> albuquerque here we come <laughs> Thoroughly modern magic. <laughs> hey everybody, we're just going to talk about a couple of decks trying to make it in the big city. That's right, they're coming in. Can they make it? The year is 1920. Magic hasn't even been invented yet. <laughs> they're all going to be wearing flapper dresses. And little, what are they called? What are those hats? Cloak hats? Pillbox hats. hats. Oh, that's the 50s. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, clo cloak. Cloches. Cloche. Cloche. Yeah. Do you know what? I saw a picture of my grandma for uh -huh. the first time this past weekend. What? Is that weird? That is weird. It is pretty weird now that I think about it. So a grandma on my dad's side, I'd never, ever seen a photo of her. Wow. She died, you know, way, way yeah. before I was born and didn't actually raise my dad. But um, isn't that like it was this is sorry this is just total yeah. side note but it was no, that's so, crazy. so strange to yeah. see somebody who like you have their genes and their yeah. dna and i read her diary she had a diary from high school what from 1926 that's amazing isn't that great that is so freaking cool and i was like this new window into this person that you know and then somebody pulled out this picture of her and i was like oh my god i look like her it was so weird. I'll have to show you the picture. That's amazing. But her diary was adorable and said things like, gee, I just had the peachiest time with Marv this past weekend. Oh my God. <laughs> like, not ironic. I can't even. <laughs> and Marv, like she wrote about Marv every single day and that ended up being her husband. That's so cute. It was the cutest, gosh darn peachy thing I ever read. Oh my goodness. That's anyway, adorable. Okay, wait. She's wearing a cute is, little cloche hat. This is a weird aside. So my grandpa on my dad's side, uh, he and his sister, their parents both died when they were pretty young. Yeah. So he was raised by by foster parents um, who were who were like really great. And I knew them growing up as yeah. like my, my great grandma and great grandpa. But anyways, um, I saw photos of he and his sister from like when they were very small and their parents were still alive mm. and my grandpa 
his like you can't tell pictures of he and his sister apart wow because his mom loved his hair so much he had this long like these curl like silky curls so she just had him grow out his hair and dressed him as a girl yes so like and it's only up until he's like four or so yeah but there's like these photos of him when he's like this like little toddler but he has like this long 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 curly hair and it's dressed in these like frilly dresses that was actually a convention yeah it was like a thing because they they thought by dressing uh, the boys as girls that death would not would oh, pass that's them right. over. To, so, anyways, it's so funny to look at them. I love it's it because like, they're these little black and white baby pictures, you know, of, like like all old timey. Oh, it's so cute. Anyway, anyway, modern. <laughs> <laughs> <That> was... <laughs> So modern. Yeah. <laughs> there were so many different deck lists in these top eights, Maria. It's I mean, pretty great. Talk about the health of a format. Modern is like, I'm ready to fight the world. That's right. Uh, so we in Copenhagen, we had uh, Death Shadow winning. Yes. And in Kopi, we had Black White Eldrazi. Yeah. <sighs> pretty That's cool. Great. Pretty cool. I love we it. We also had a Lantern Control in the top eight. So wonderful, and an Esper control, and a Jeskai control in the top eight, and Kobe, like, what a world what to a live world in, you know? Like, in. what a place to be alive. Let's talk about some of these decks. Yeah, let's talk about them. Because they're, like, fantastic. Yeah, I'm just so are. happy that these are all different. Yeah, but, but Maria, there's one yeah. that you want to talk about in particular, because it yes. is a new, uh, kind of a combo-ish deck. Yeah. Uh, that we saw emerge in Copenhagen and is in the top eight. So this deck has been on the tongues of a lot of pros recently. Yep. It's a weird way to put it. Yeah. But it's like the hot it's the hot new thing. Hot gas. Okay? Because there's a card in it, Vizier of Remedies, which came to us from Amonkhet. Yeah. And if you play with this card in Limited, it's kind of a pooper, but it's, you know, it's like fine, whatever. It's a 2-1. It's two like one. fine. You know, be nice to okay, it. Okay, I'm sorry. It's like fine. It's a 2-1 for one and a white. And what happens if you if a negative one, negative one counter would be placed on one of your creatures... You place that many minus one instead. And the thing that happened was that uh, they decided to use this card to make an infinite combo so you get unlimited mana. Yeah. And so the way that works is there's um, this card, uh, Heritage Druid. Wait, where did it go? No, Devoted Druid. De Sorry, it's Devoted the one I'm thinking Druid. of. It's one and a green for an O2, and it says tap, add green to your mana pool. Put a minus one, minus one counter on Devoted Druid, untap it. Yeah. Um, and so, basically, if you have a Vizier of Remedies and a Devoted Druid in play, you can just make infinite mana. <laughs> because <laughs> Vizier of Remedies says, oh, put put a minus one, minus one counter on it, but one but also fewer. also don't. So, in, in Devoted <laughs> Druid's case, that's just like none. So, you yeah. can tap and untap and tap and untap. And it's interesting because this is an effect that wasn't possible before because the card that, so this is just like so interesting yes. to me. So there was a card called Malira Silvak Outcast, which you see in a lot of green sideboards yeah. um, as a way uh, against like a, a card to beat infect or a card to fight it. And it says you can't get poison counters. Creatures you control can't have minus one, minus one counters placed on them. Um, creatures your opponent control lose infect. But what's notable is that you look at that and in theory you say that should have worked the same right. way, right? But it doesn't because what it says is that you can't put those counters on at all. Right. And Devoted Druid, in order to untap it, you have to put the counter on it. Right. And so Malira Silvak Outcast would have just made it so you couldn't activate that Devoted Druid <laughs> at all. Whereas the Vizier says, hey, you can activate it, but put one fewer minus one minus one yeah. counters on it when you do it. So this is... It's super... Like, that just super is cool. so cool. It's a really neat interaction. Yeah. Um, I, I say that now until it takes over the format, but like uh, the what you're doing with all this, what the heck are you doing with all this mana? Yeah, well, first of all, you have some uh, Court of Callings, sure. so you can just go and get whatever you feel like getting uh, at all. Uh, once you're able to cast it, you once you have this combo going, uh, and you can go get a Ronus the Indomitable. Yes, and then you can just uh, pump all your creatures a billion times, <laughs> you know, and trample, trample over for six billion damage, Seems or however good. much you feel like. You know, it's interesting to me why this deck doesn't run something like Ulamog or whatever. Yeah, that is kind of interesting. Don't really know why, but they decided um, Ronus is yeah. going to be the one to do it. So that's true. Although, so the way it works is that like. Something like Ulamog, uh, with Court of Calling, you're not casting it. You're putting it into play. Oh, yeah, that's true. So you true. won't get cast triggers, and it has to survive until the next yeah. 
Uh, so if you go Rotus, and get Rotus, there's already stuff out there. Exactly. So you can't and you stop just it. kill them immediately, yeah. which is pretty cool. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, this is a pretty sweet deck and one that I'm kind of terrified to face at Vegas because it's really fast, right? Yeah. This combo is not hard to assemble. You only need, well, you, you need three cards, but um, they're not hard to cast. They're ones, what is she, one mana or two? Uh, two. They're, yeah, Devoted they're both Druid two, two. two mana. Yeah. And then Ronus is only three, so... Yeah. so you have a four-collected company, which, do you know what, like, I just thought of, like, how bonkers is that card when you can just get a Ronus off of it? Pretty good. It's just absurd. Yeah. Be like, yeah, I'll just get this, I'll put this 5-5 five five into play. It's cool. Pretty great. I should, we should play with this deck online, because it looks kind of fun. Yeah, it looks like it would be fun. Okay, so that's Although, Counter's like, company. once you start going off, you're going to have to do a lot of clicking. A lot of it's clicking. A lot of clicking. But anyways. Counter's Company, which... Pretty I, cool. That's a. That, I don't, I'm not sure about this name because I want to talk about the Vizier of Remedies in it. Yeah. Not the collected company. I'm done with that card. Yeah. What do, what do you <laughs> want to call it? Goodbye. Devoted um, Remedies. <laughs> Vizier of Recruiting. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was thinking of Dustwatch Recruiting. Oh, yeah. Also in there. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but <laughs> Vizier, Vizier of, uh, of Recruiting. Yep. I mean, dumb. De Vizier of Devotion. Remedies, uh, anyway, that was one of, <laughs> did not win, did not take down Copenhagen. What took it down was Death Shadow. Yes. Which uh, we all know and love or know and hate yeah. at this point. Know and feel some sort of way about. Yep. Death Shadow was in that, in that top eight. We had a dredge. Uh, yeah. A storm. storm. That's cool. Piloted by known swearer Martin Mueller. <laughs> Noted dropper of F-bombs. Noted Martin dropper Mueller. of F-bombs. <laughs> Uh, Titan Shift, which you yeah. you talked about I maybe enjoy that deck. being interested in. Yeah. Living End. Yes, which was in the finals. Lantern Control. Hello, friend. <laughs> Interestingly, I like that this, so this, or I, like, I don't know how I feel entirely, but this yeah. Lantern Control has four Leyline of Sanctity in the main deck. You know what? super interesting. Like, yeah. You I, can't be targeted. This is what I was thinking. If I were to play Boggles yeah. in Vegas, should I just main deck my Leylines? Probably. Maybe. Probably. If you think that there's going to be a lot of Thought Seasons and a lot of Lilianas. I think yeah. Death Shadow is still going to be pretty heavy in Vegas. Yeah, I would say so. So anyway, that was a thought that I had. Absolutely. Um, Grix's Shadow. Yeah. Took it down. That's great. So let's talk about Kobe for a second. White Black Eldrazi took it down. Joe So. That's right. Eldrazi, you know. you know, we remember the winter, but now we're on the Eldrazi kind of like. Just tepid. Just time. <laughs> tepid weather. <laughs> tepid the Eldrazi seers, normal. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, we had Eldrazi Tron. Mm -hmm. So Tron's still out there in a way. Yeah. Uh, Dredge. We had a copy of Dredge. Uh, Just got control, Hello. Megan. I know. Mm. Oh, interesting running spell quellers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, good old spell cue. <laughs> spell EQ. Um, here we have Grix's Shadow. Another one in the top eight. An Esper, Esper control. control. Wait, go down. Let's just take a look. I just need to, you know, I need, I need to, to say to hello to this. Here. Ooh, Tassiger. four glory bound initiate. <laughs> glory bound initiate. You're look in a control deck. That. You traitor. Well, do you know what? This is interesting because they're like life gain is important to control decks. I think that sometimes yeah. um, when you're looking at what are the barriers to making a control deck successful in a format is if there's no way. Sphinx's revelation. <laughs> if there's no Sphinx's revelation. <laughs> It Make sucks. your own. Uh, yeah, that's something that can be kind of important. So this is like a, a way to make it happen. Cool. Glorybone Initiate. Not where I thought I'd see you, but hello, friend. I know, right? Affinity in the top eight. All right. Yep, Affinity still course, alive and well. Of course. Ad nauseum. The yeah. deck I just cannot stand playing against <laughs> in the top eight as well. So yeah, yeah there you go. It's kind of nuts. So you've got, let's say, you've got a smorgasbord of choices yes. if you're going to play a Vegas. sample of platter. Or any other modern tournament. Like, yeah. this just proves that there are so many viable decks in the format. That's just, I, we love to see that. Yeah, we really do. So just pick what's in your heart, you know? And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel next week, <gasps> we will have a modern deck tech available. <laughs> what will it, it be? will be none of the decks that we have mentioned. Yeah. What could it be? What could it be? Who knows? I I do. I know. I wrote it. I wrote it. <laughs> so I know, but you don't yet. But you can guess. I bet one of you will guess correctly. I bet more than one of you will guess correctly. I bet some number of you will guess correctly, and it's probably kind of a lot. <laughs> Text Theater presents Blast from the Past, Hanging Out Memories. Uh, that's right. We're going to crack open a pan, a pan of... A pan. Cacks of Tokyo. 
<laughs> a pan of magic cards. If cards came in a pan, uh, you could quickly fry them up and that's how it opened them and then they... A pack of cons of Tarkir. You're just thinking that because you just made those fried tuna cakes. I did. I'm uh, on a fried tuna cake kick. She is. And before you think it's gross, maybe eat one. Okay, wait. First <laughs> I'm going to tell you a story. I came over to record this episode and I like walk into Maria's house uh, and there's like tuna cakes sizzling on the stove. And I'm like, hello? And then I walk around her house saying, yee, because that's, that's what we what do. We do. Uh, and I, like, walk around the whole first floor, and then I, like, come upstairs, and I walk around the whole second floor, and Maria is nowhere. And then I, like, get back down to the kitchen, and her, like, phone and her purse are both in the kitchen, and these, like, tuna cans are still just, like, frying on the stove, and she's nowhere. And I was just like, this is, like, what so this scary. is the opening to a horror movie. <laughs> The truth is, I was in the basement, so I did not hear her. And I could not hear Maria in the basement, and she, like, you know, there's very little reason to be in the basement besides, you know, like, cleaning out the cat litter, which I think is what you were doing. Yeah, it was. So it was just like, I was just like, oh, God. And I was like, I think I wait, like, five oh minutes, and then God. I start panicking. That's but, so creepy. So anyway. Anyway. Trip down memory lane. We're going to crack these packs, and we're going to tell you about some times. Some we had with memories. these cards. We have. Keep in mind, these cards will go to a patron. Uh, we're doing the drawing this That's very right. episode. So, Gate Crash man, Memories. Oh, I got an I ooze know, token. Right? So, oh. talk about Oh, look, I got a morph. Oh, morph. Morph. I remember morphs. Yeah, me too. Let's take this trip down memory lane. All right, let's. I'm going to show Okay. Oh, a teamer banner. Oh, yeah. Uh, man. Do you remember that time that you and I were lost in the wilderness? I do. And like, you know, we were out at a Minnesota state park and we would have never found our way home if it hadn't been for that teamer banner that climbed the highest hill yeah. and climbed a tree and just like waved its flag for us to see and come and find it again. Minnesota state parks, by the way, voted number one in the nation. Mm. Do you remember that time when we saw somebody get murdered and I was like do you want to see a dead body and you're like yeah this sounds like a movie and I was like it's not Grizzly Spectacle <laughs> this card was awesome yeah yeah I love that Ooh, card do you remember the time that um the time that we went to <laughs> Home Depot we were walking oh, around yeah. the gardening section and I was like you were like oh man I didn't realize that there were so many different plants that grew in the desert because, uh, you know, we were looking Cactuses. at, you know, exactly, some, some low-maintenance plants. And I was like, oh, yeah, they make blossoming sand. <laughs> low-maintenance plants. I wish that was, like, the sign the over sign. them because that's what I need. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a rare from our pack. This is a blast from the past. Do you remember the time when I was like, Megan, does my neck look weird to you? And you're like, oh, you have a, like a really weird growth going on. And I was like, oh no, I must have a goiter. Come on in to the doctor with me to get my goiter removed. It was a biomass mutation. <laughs> do you remember? What do you think this card does? Do you remember? Um, I remember like you didn't really play this card. Like it wasn't Yeah, no, I don't good. think so. I don't know. Creatures you control become XX until end of turn. It costs X hybrid green blue hybrid green blue. But the art is hilarious because it's like a giant frog and like a giant lizard hovering over the <laughs> city. Yeah, it is. It's so cool. That's awesome. Okay, um do you remember that time um when you uh you for you know, you forgot everything. <laughs> You bumped yeah, your head and you I don't remember everything. that time, but yeah. Um, and I and I like helped you recover all of your memories by telling them back to you. Oh, and yeah. you're like, how do you remember all that stuff? And I was like, oh, I have a cranial archive. <laughs> that another art that I just love. Yeah, it was really cool. Do you remember when I was like, Megan, we should go to Wales because it's the greatest place on earth, and they have a natural resource that lots of people like to put on the roofs. It's called slate, and we we're going down an alley, and I was like, uh oh. Looks like one of those slate baddies <laughs> carrying carrying a slate like hammer and what do you call it chisel or something? Uh huh. And they're coming at us with that hammer and chisel down the slate alley. It was a slate street ruffian. Um, do you remember that time that we robbed a stagecoach with a pony back brigade? <laughs> I sure do. 
<laughs> do you remember when I was like, oh, Megan, I really like this person. What can I do to let them know? And you're like, hey, I've got this witch that I go to who gives me secret love potions. And then uh, she's like, what are your favorite colors? Man, and at the time, I didn't understand my true nature. So I said red, white, and she gave me a Boros charm. <laughs> Do you remember that time um, that we were both so upset by the poaching of elephants, as we, as day. everyone should be, yeah. um, that we decided that we were going to build an, a castle big enough to hold every elephant and keep them safe forever? <laughs> it was an yeah. ivory tusk fortress. I remember that. Do you remember when we were like, Megan, what's on your bucket list? And you're like, seeing the Pope. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> sounds like me. That sounds like me. <laughs> we're going to the Vatican. And we went there, and but we, they wouldn't let us in because they're like, you two look like some magic playing heathens. And we were like, no, we're not. Let us in to see the Pope. And we bribed, we extorted the guards for money. They were the Basilica guards. Do you remember the time that we were having a fight, but I was like, I'm not going to fight right now. So instead I put you on a boat on the Mississippi. <laughs> and just pushed you out to the river. Good solution. You were set adrift. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. Do you remember that one time that there was a card in Magic called Molestation in French, but in English it's called Mugging? <laughs> True story. Um, hey, do you remember that time um, that you were driving and I was like, Maria, don't hit that snake in the road! And you swerved and you went to the right of the serpent? <laughs> Megan, do you remember that time when, after you set me adrift in a boat on the Mississippi, <laughs> I looked at you with a killing glare? That's hey, do you remember that time when we went to your childhood home and you showed me all of the places where they had marked your height on the wall and you were like, look, I'm still getting taller. You were having incremental growth. <laughs> yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> hey, do you remember that one time when, uh, like, <laughs> there is a song, who sings it? Uh, Backstreet Boys or something? Qu mm -hmm. Quit playing games with my heart? Uh -huh. I don't know. I feel like, is that even older than that? Anyway, um, but you were singing it while you were in an airplane. Sky Games. <laughs> Play, playing Sky Games with my heart. Um, do you remember that time that we were in Denver and we accidentally said something that was deeply upsetting to a lot of uh, people from Colorado and then they just like took whatever was in their hands and threw it at us and then they charged us? It was a barrage of boulders. I remember that. <laughs> Do you remember that time when you were like, I've got a hankering for some honey? And you were like, the best way to get fresh honey is to go out into the woods and find a hive. And uh, you did. You went out there, but you had to smoke the bees out, right, to get the honey. Yeah. So you had a torch, and you just accidentally set the hive on fire. Yeah. And there was some angry ember beast there. <laughs> um, do you remember that time that, uh, like, we were, we, you know, we were getting super drunk, but you weren't, like, you were like kind of hanging back and I was like Maria time to like you need to just like step up to the plate you need to kill that shot <laughs> do you remember that time when we went back in time to Noah in the flood and you're like what would happen if he didn't save all those animals and instead we just got brand new animals fresh start and you took a hammer and you smashed his boat it was a scatter arc <laughs> do you remember the time we were sitting around trying to think of uh, the new multi-million dollar idea and we were like what about women's garters but they look like Ties and we were tie gams scheming. <laughs> Do you remember that time that we were like eating uh, a bunch of um, off brand Twizzlers? And then I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I tied you up in a chair with all of these? And you're uh -huh. like, haha, that would be funny, Hinder Vines. <laughs> Do you remember that time that I set you adrift on the river, but then when yeah, you got back, I, I pretended do. like it had never happened, and I was like, Maria, what are you talking about? I would never do that. You're having paranoid delusions. Do you remember that time that, af that after we did so many of these, our show imploded on itself, yeah. and it was a structural collapse? <laughs> what, yeah. what great memories we have. Great memories what great we memories have. we have. <laughs> Ooh, that's a foil paranoid twist. Yeah, it is. It's a foil <laughs> incremental growth, too. Cool. Well, everybody, it's the end of the month, and you know what that means? It's time to pay your rent. That's right. Pay your rent and get paid by Magic the Amateuring. What? That's right. In cards. And sick playmats. In fact, uh, our new new patron uh, drawing this month is for... <gasps> Look at this Kali Tots playmat. So play cool. Mat. This is like... 
I forgot about this one. Yeah, but like, looks it's great. really good. Close up. This art is so baller. I love it. It's awesome. Okay. Uh, so anyways. the drawing is for the cards we've opened in Flavor Text Theater going to one person. And you're also yes. going to get and a couple of packs. A couple packs in there as well. And some cool tokens. Tokens here yeah. from the Vegas Art Show. Remember, if you're going to Vegas, check out the Magic Art Show. Here we have a zombie and a soldier. Those are going in there as well. Very cool. And of course, some packs, as we mentioned. So the winner of yeah. all time could be somebody new and it could be somebody who's been donating for a long time the winner of these cards for may is michael yawn nice happens to be a new Congrats. patron so yeah it could happen to you that's right and uh the winner of this playmat plus this pair of <gasps> sick card kingdom battle decks awesome designed by chris van meter yes um and this sick Kali Toss play mat. I don't know if I already said that. <laughs> Maybe I did. And these sick battle decks from Card Kingdom Megan's designed by Chris loop. Van Meter. And this She's in a loop! Uh, it's Laura Blenny from the UK. Woo! Hey, awesome. Laura! Congrats, Laura. So thank you so much to everybody who's a patron and everybody who's joined our Less Than 1% family. You are the best than 1%. And uh, tune in next month because you'll have a chance to win some more yes. cards, some more sick swag. We're going to refill our swag coffers, <laughs> as it were, to have more stuff to oh, give away. Oh no, the swag coffers is running low, kids. Better Don't get worry. out on the streets and find some sick swag. I bet old-timey newscaster will help out. Of course he will. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to put these in a little box and send them on their merry way. Head on over to patreon.com slash mtacast for your chance to win all of this awesome stuff and support our show because as we said, uh, we're making more stuff and it really it really matters to us it if, really you, does. if you're a patron. So thank you again, of course, to Card Kingdom for not only supplying us with these sweet battle decks, but also for sponsoring our show every week and being the awesome place that they are, including shipping a Muppet who arrived unscathed. <laughs> Amazing. You'll get to see that Muppet someday. Yes, you Aren't will. Aren't you excited? And if you haven't went over and subbed on our YouTube channel, head over to youtube.com slash mtacast. Also, check out our sister channel, MTA Plays, if you want to see Legacy Boggles in, app in action pi piloted by Cube April. It's really something to behold. Yeah. <laughs> so really, check that out as really well. Is. Follow us on Twitter at mtacast. Listen on iTunes or our website magicallyamateuring.com. We've got shirts for sale. we got play mats for sale. we got magnets for sale. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, it is. Do you know what also is good stuff? What? You. Yeah. <laughs>